How's it going, everyone? How's it going, everyone? Okay, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to Change the Life, uh, Change the Life, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burden. Happy Thursday, everyone. Hope you guys have been having a fantastic week so far. I have myself, if you see, I have my uh, begging for money outfit on today. Um, uh, went and uh, had a great day uh, mentoring and volunteering at Evelyn C. West Elementary School, talking to the youth up there. Say what's up to my uh, my producer, DJ Lab. What's going on? What's going on? My man, everything all right. And I uh, want to send a big shout out to my sister, Joni. She, uh, she'll she be on a little hiatus for a while. She may be here next week. But um, right now she's on a little hiatus and stuff. want to just give a, a big shout out to you uh, and let you know we're thinking about you. Uh, we had a fantastic uh, week that just passed. And also, um, today we got an awesome show for you. This show right here is going to be real near and dear to my heart. I'm going to talk about why I love mentoring and coaching and, you know, helping develop people. Uh, especially kids and everything. It's something real near dear to me. So I just want to, I'm going to go over some things in terms of mentoring, define mentoring, uh, different kind of mentors, what to look for in a mentor, and what mentors most importantly have done for me in my life. Uh, as always, we re- rehashed uh, the previous week. And, you know, as always, we're right, well, not as always, right now, we're in the middle of tax season. You know, I'm the owner of Majestic Business Services. We're a full-scale business service firm. You know, we're in tax season, so we've uh, been swamped with that. Business has been great this year. Uh, been super excited. And uh, we've got a lot of feedback from people calling from the show, people looking us up on Facebook, some of the ads on Instagram and stuff. So if you got anything you need done, tax or business-related, please don't hesitate to give us a call in regard to that. I'll get a contact information for the show uh, shortly. Also, my son, Torian, had his boot camp this past Saturday. It went awesome. Uh, TAF Sports, it was awesome. I was very, I, I don't I don't mean in a negative way, so I was shocked. But I was very, very pleased <laughs> on how it went from an operational standpoint. Really? I was, uh, I was very impressed. Well, I was very sometimes impressed. Sometimes, just got to let it go. Hey, I just stood back. I, uh, I actually streamed uh, live on Instagram and Facebook uh, with the show. But, man, he, he showed out. Oh, really? He showed out, man. I mean. From from a functionality standpoint, being everybody being engaged, uh-huh. so just want to let everybody know that was his first one. So uh, make sure you look out TAL Sports. Make sure you subscribe to his uh, his Instagram and his Facebook TAL Sports and look him up because he ha- he should be having another boot camp coming up next month in April. Okay. So I just want to kind of keep everybody uh, on on the, the cuff for that and everything. Also, uh, the show is still growing. Uh, subscribers on Instagram, we went over 600 subscribers. Um, I'm getting some emails, some feedback. I won't necessarily say what's good or bad. It's just feedback. All so right. <laughs> we, we take it how we take it and everything. That's so right. that's been going pretty good with, with getting that. Also, also with uh, uh, other things that people inquiring about the the – the seminars and the the courses that we have coming up and all that's going to start probably late April, early May. So I'll be putting most of the information out uh, with that soon enough. So make sure you're on the lookout for that. Um, in regards to Majestic Business Services, our contact is w- contact information is www.majesticbiz.com. That's majesticbiz.com. Or you can give us a call at the office at 678-479-4007. It's again at 678-479-4007. Before we start, I want to apologize to everybody about delay. There is some motorcade <laughs> going on on 75. All exits. Well, the exits to get on 20 was shut down. I couldn't even go. I saw, thank God I have a little knowledge of downtown. I had to go through some of them back streets and hop on 20. But I'm here. So, again, I apologize for the delay. And it was coming on air, but it was out of my control. That's right. And everything. So, um with this show again, why I love mentoring and talking about mentoring. Mentoring is so important because uh, when we start thinking about, you know, first in in, in defining mentoring, it's a, uh, you know, educational life or or, or personal development uh, given by people that you know support you in a professional or personal manner. Uh, when people can actually put their hands on you and give you advice in terms of uh, their life lessons to help you steer you in the right direction. Men- mentors are, are crucial mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm. and um uh there are so many kids out here with, with no guidance uh here a lot of adults out here 
I was just about to say, uh-huh. mentor don't have to be you just know? kids. No, absolutely. We're going to dive into that, too, okay. from a, a, a youth, an adult, and a professional perspective. But uh, it's really needed. Mm-hmm. And two key components coming up with mentoring is um, you got to have people that want to give back and mentor. You also got to have people that want to listen and learn from a mentor, <laughs> you know. That's and the uh, hardest part. Absolutely. You know, just starting off, I kind of I want to kind of just go down the road in terms of what mentors have done to me in my life. My first mentor, you know, was my grandfather. That's who raised me, uh, W.C. Burden. Mm. Uh, and that's probably where I got a lot of my ways from, uh, good and bad. <laughs> <laughs> Lord knows I got some of his bad ways. But, um, <laughs> you know, he taught me really how to be a man. He, and my grandfather was what was considered from that era a man's man. Okay. You know, you know, he was straight up with you. He, he, he was a straight shooter. He ain't lie. If he borrowed money from you, he paid you back. If he didn't have it to pay it back, he'll call you and tell you he paid pay you back, mm-hmm. and he still paid you back. Uh, he didn't say shit behind your back that he want to say to your face. Right. You know, and he had no problem, you know, uh, you know, just with keeping folks out of their business. Mm-hmm. That was one of the first people. That, well, he, he was the main person told me, you don't want folks in your business, don't put them in there. <laughs> and that has guided some of those principles that got him in my life, and I, I always – look at in terms of my work as it is directly contri- attributed to it, my grandfather because mm-hmm. um, if anybody knows me, since I've been 13 years old, I've been working. Yeah. And, you know, I, I never sold drugs or anything in my life or anything like that, and I'm not trying to you know, talk about anybody that has or hasn't, but getting up, going to work, and coming home, falling on the couch, you, your wife got a plate ready for you, we can call it misogynist or whatever. <laughs> That's what turned me on in life. And so that's what I always wanted to, when I long when I was first able to work, uh-huh. I've been hitting the pavement, right. just getting it in there. And so my grandfather was very, very, very influential in yeah. doing that. In I think people, um, people don't really uh, have the value of grandfathers. You know, my grandfather helped me. You know, when I was growing up, helped raise me. You know, and like like you said, he was just a man's man. He didn't play. He didn't. He ain't really cry. He ain't really, you know, he wasn't a color or, or a coddling type of person. But you know, he loved you just because of the fact that it. I don't know. It was just he just he. If he loved you, he loved you. He fed you. He gave you food. He did whatever he had to do. That's what the, you know. Back then, that was pretty much they show a love. You know, you got clothes on your back. You ain't outside. You eat good. You you sleep well. And and. and, and and I've been working since I was like twelve or thirteen. You know, I had that paper route. We 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 did papers and newspapers and all that stuff. But that was all attributed to my grandfather and the fact that he had nine kids. And then I was number ten because <laughs> I was raised with him. So mm-hmm. he always told us about you know you have to do whatever you have to do to to get the money. You have to work your you know work these jobs. You have to work two jobs. Whatever you have to do, you know, to support your family. That's what you need to do. And like you, I've never sold drugs or anything like that. I've always just worked, mm-hmm. you know, just, I, I know, sometimes two or three jobs. Yeah, It, it was understood yeah. that you're you, you going to get your ass a job. <laughs> my, my sister's eight years younger than me, and when she came around, it was understood that, okay, you ain't going to get shit for Christmas. So, okay, you know, like, okay, this is your school money. So from that point forward, I had to go work and get my school clothes and stuff. And there wasn't no uh, response in terms of uh uh, anybody feeling bad mm-hmm. that you gotta go get a job by your school clothes? You're like, look, motherfucker, he wants some school clothes. Mm-hmm. You go get, it. <laughs> <laughs> okay? <laughs> Shit. It is what it is, right? And you, you know, further, no, uh, that's how my grandfather was. And he'll say that shit with a straight face, mm-hmm. and you uh, okay? You know, don't give a damn how you felt about right. it, whatever. So that and, and that was uh my first one. Um, my second was my homeroom teacher, uh, Mr. Leo Shingles. He mm-hmm. Mr. Shingles was the person that introduced me to the financial services industry. Okay. That was the magnet program at C.L. Harper High School. We, uh, uh, you know, Atlanta Public Schools, we had the magnet schools. And I think, the, I don't know if they grew from that. It's kind of different how they got everything set up now. Okay. I think, I know, like, I think at Carver, they had all different new schools at Carver that had different um, uh, things. But back in the 90s in, in the magnet programs, each school had a different magnet program. Okay. Okay. And what, in Harper's, was a uh, financial services actually capital city bank had a branch in our in our media a mall in the lobby part in the bottom uh-huh. they had a branch oh, okay and you know them scheming things over there they talk about <laughs> man who's gonna rob the bank and everything it actually had a 
actual bank and everything for mm-hmm. students to get started. So that actually got me started on that whole track of financial services and everything like that because uh, he was the first person to introduce that to me and make uh, making money, investing, all that stuff tangible okay. and everything. Okay. So he was very pivotal in me doing that. Uh, I made some uh, unfortunate decisions in high school. I couldn't go get the whole grant, so I had to go in the Army. Right. And uh, my next major mentor that I had was uh, Sergeant Major Antonio Barnes. Sergeant Major. Yeah. yeah. Now, he was Sergeant First Class Antonio Barnes then. Okay. And uh, Sergeant Barnes was an asshole. <laughs> when I say asshole, <laughs> asshole. But the thing what he put on me is probably one of the most powerful things. He gave me that professional swag. Okay. This brother, it didn't matter. Like, he was just so into himself. Like, he what he told me one time, I'll never forget. He said, Burden, you know, when everybody come to me and they want shit done, you know, it's a euphoria when you hear your name and people know it's excellence. Right, right. And so, usually when he would say stuff, I'd be like, eh, yeah, what the hell, <laughs> But then I said, damn, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. And it was funny. Anything you knew with him, he didn't cut no corners. Everything was attention to detail, make it happen. But anything that was attached to his name, it was supreme. It was excellent. Mm. And being under him for almost two years, that set the tone for me professionally. Okay. And especially see a black man um, in that capacity. Mm -hmm. That did a lot for me being that young, you know, to see so many people. Because one thing about it, you know, and this is just being real, I kind of look at it in terms of, um, a lot of blacks, you know, not all, but a lot. And it's just being, you know, my observation. Um, we feel esteem, you know, where we are feel like we we're working, you know, for these white folks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Especially like going some older eras, even now. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm working for you know, working for Coke, and I'm doing mm-hmm. this, and I'm working for that, and I feel good and everything, just right. to be part of it, right? right? Or just even working with somebody got maybe like a just on a high hierarchy. It may not be just even a don't have more than you but just knowing you're working with some white folks just feeling glad I'm, I'm associated with it right 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 but the whole thought of them working with you and god forbid you had a thought their ass is working for, for you, you right it's just like a foregone thought and to see that black man having all these white folks under his command and respecting him mm-hmm. man that fucked me up <laughs> and right. it just hit that button in me shit that's what i want right that's me and uh, so, you know, he all effed me up and everything. So <laughs> I got that same arrogance and, you know, moved on to become Sergeant Burden myself and everything. And, and that was just really, that was one of the biggest imprints I had. So fast forward, probably my last mentor. And this guy here really helped me out a lot, you know, because this is my, my mentor um, in corporate America, mm-hmm. a brother named Darrell Crawford. Darrell was a, I hired to work at the railroad for about two years, and yeah. I didn't have no mentor there. So, you know, me and my damn- You don't uh, get no mentor at the railroad. Oh, I worked hell there for nah. four or five years. Shit. Everybody trying to retire. Ain't nobody trying to help man, me nowhere. let me tell you something. Me and a wife that was in there, man, it, was, it wasn't even go, it wasn't class. You had a 20, what, a 24, 25-year-old Deontay, mm-hmm. and you know, you get told, you know, you know you're know, getting good money, because that's mm-hmm. what you talk to a lot of your family members. Right. But you had the railroad, but I know you make good money. I ain't want good money, I want white boy money. All right. That's what I wanted. Okay. And I feel like I should get it, because they wasn't doing no more than what I was doing. Exactly. And I'm not one of the type of person that's gonna be comfortable with, you know, good money. I want what I deserve. Right. And uh, I remember one of my uh, supervisors, I said, well, hey, you know, I did a little interview. I remember like it was yesterday. She said, uh, I said, oh, hey, so are y'all going to consider me? She said, well, why, Deontay? I said, well, you know, I can go through a list. She said, well, you know, you do know the systems. You've been here for a while. You know everything. I said, well, hell, exactly. She said, well, we look at other corporately things. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, typically the average person here that word corporate things, and they walk out of the room, okay. Okay. Shit, not me. And keep in mind, this, is, twi- <laughs> this is totally unpolished right. Deontay. Right. I'm like, what the hell is corporate things? I'm what the hell? And now nah, this is some bush, you know, and everything like that. So you know how far that goes. So I left the railroad. <laughs> you start questioning. Yeah, exactly. It becomes a problem. Exactly. So I got on with this nonprofit. I was there for about 15 years, and Daryl was there, and Daryl took me under his wing. And so I still went in there with that same thing because when you're not, when you haven't been groomed, mm-hmm. and keep in mind, just kind of put in perspective, Atlanta Public Schools up until – yeah, maybe the two thousands 
was predominantly black. Mm-hmm. Maybe, you know, you go back in the 60s and 70s when it was right. majority white. But those 90s, you know, I never went to school with a white person. Exactly. And I maybe had two or three white teachers. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the Army was already a culture shock because that was a big melting pot. And then you go in corporate America. If you haven't been groomed for that shit, which I totally wasn't, that was rough. Mm-hmm. And he really helped me in my transition because a lot of times when I was about to explode and lose my damn mind, you know, with everything, because some things, yeah, are disrespect. Some things you just you just, yeah, you just feel like, you. nah. Because, you know, sometimes you get a call your Deontay, can you help me move? You know, uh, can you know get a call, Deontay, can you help me move the desk or the copier and son? You know why you calling me? Oh. And, and, and and my buddy Daryl he had the same. He <laughs> said, "Hey D, partner. yeah." But he he had a good point. Sometimes he'd be like D, I think it's more your brawn than your skin color. <laughs> and you know, and, and, and I needed to hear that sometimes. Damn and then it. also sometimes on how to handle folks and not necessarily go off the kill and how to navigate and everything like that. But Daryl was very very crucial. Yeah. In my development as a in the corporate world. Yeah. And also learning, you know, what battle to fight, what not to fight. And, and and most importantly, get as much as you can out of every situation as possible. Yeah. And everything. So that, that you know, that was a a quick rundown on, you know, four important mentors that I've had in my life that that have really helped mold me mm-hmm. uh to do that. And also with dealing with the four, with those four gentlemen, it instilled something in me to know that and be very realistic, I'm not where I'm at right now. Most importantly, if other people didn't help me. Exactly. And I think a lot of people forget that. They forget that. A lot of people would forget that. Yeah. My, I had a mentor in corporate America. This is a white guy uh-huh. named Stephen Gibbs. I was, when I first got out of college, he, they hired me at this company. And uh, he kind of just took me on his wings. He just kind of, and I, this was property management. I, was in, I, I loved doing property management, but I was managing, managing shopping centers. I knew nothing about shopping centers. Uh-huh. I knew nothing about managing these things. I didn't even know they had managers. So, he hired me, took me on his wing, and just showed me a lot of things about it, how to do it properly, how to, you know, deal with these contractors and tenants and, you know, all those things that had to do with property management, he showed me, and he showed me willingly. Mm-hmm. And then when he went to another company, he called me and moved me over to that other company too, and we just, it was just a thing. And I was just surprised because me being from Chicago, moving to the South, I wasn't expecting a white person to take me on their wing and show me anything, you know. So it was just I appreciate him for it. I always do appreciate I still appreciate him for the day because he just showed me so many things about how to handle certain situations. Because, you know, if you got, you know, million dollar, you know, billion dollar companies leasing your spaces, they expect you to, re- you know, respond right then. But he showed me how to navigate that. How to navigate that that business, those those you know, class A properties, class B properties, class C and D properties. He showed me how to navigate those things properly to make sure that my property always looked better than the next person's property. Mm-hmm. Or he always used to say, You never want you never want nobody from the company to come out and tell you something about your property that you don't already know. Exactly. You know, when somebody say somebody, oh, yeah, I already got that. So They're going to be out here. Such, I mean, you got to always, that's why you, he said, you always walk the property. You always, you know, walk the parking lot. You walk the roof. You know, just a lot of things that I probably wouldn't have done because I didn't know anything about it. Exactly. So that was my corporate guy to show me into things and just show me how to, you know, talk to people, talk, type up things and proposals and budgets and all that stuff. So, yeah. You know, you, you know, you, you know what's so funny about that? You know, even with having a mentor and then going back to what I said initially, mm-hmm. you know, getting one but also being able to receive it, uh, there are so many people they don't realize when you get that kind of information, a pivotal part of you advancing in your career has a lot to do with you working on your craft, knowing mm-hmm. it. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times people just cool with getting a job on going at this, that, and that, but they don't learn the company, don't learn they learn their job specifically and can know it inside out, mm-hmm. but understand how that job functions in the whole big scheme of the corporation or the organization, where they fit, and also find out what the the point of where they at, where they can navigate other spots. Right. People can't content just being that one spot, but that's a crucial part of advancing um, in any field, mm-hmm. working on that craft, working on your craft, investing in yourself. A lot of folks don't do that. That's one of the crucial things a lot of mentors can help you see mm-hmm. because we're so stuck here. And the yeah. mentor of your eyes to kind of look at the whole field and stuff like that. Um, I want to kind of give you some steps. I'm going to bounce around a couple of things. But one of the first things I want to kind of talk to everybody about is uh, with 
trying to and also everyone I want to rehash like I tell everyone before we're streaming live on Facebook YouTube and Instagram so if we can't respond to you immediately we're trying our best and everything we're doing that so but uh if we don't you're on a horse and I appreciate you tuning in that's right um but let me give you ideas on how to choose a mentor okay the first thing I want you guys to look at and keep in mind when you're looking for a mentor for yourself or your child or a family member, something like that, make sure that you can verify who they are. Make sure you don't want to have um, Uncle Joe, Grandpa Johnny, your neighbor, your, your you know, an old friend neighborhood just giving you damn blind advice on shit they really don't damn know. Mm. You know, and they, you know, you, you respect them as a person and everything, but when we talking about mentoring now, they can mentor you in as maybe being a husband because they've been married 20 years, but they can't uh, mentor you as, you know, being a corporate attorney. Mm -hmm. They can't mentor you and start your own business because they haven't done it and everything. And you have to be realistic about who you're talking to and what capacity you're trying to get some kind of information and guidance from. So, number one, verify who they are. Um, next, make sure that this person can give you insight. And when I say insight, they can't just let you know, hey, if you start your own business, it's hard work. No, 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 no. You need to know, <laughs> have somebody that can be very intuitive and give you a lot of instruction step by step and actually be able to hold your hand through the whole process of teaching you and help guiding you. Because one key component with a mentor is somebody that's going to talk with you, you know, and, and, and have those kind of communications with you that, you know, if you have questions, you can bounce back. Uh, bounce back ideas and they can tell you their opinion and stuff. Things they know are true, they can tell you that. Things they know are false, you know, same with that. Uh, the third thing, make sure this person is honest. Far too many times people want to have somebody that's going to talk to them and tell them what they want to hear. You can't have that. Mm. You know, uh, my son's uh, uh, boot camp this weekend, uh, super proud of him. But one thing I know I can uh, give him credit for he knows when we came, I said the boot camp was immediately over. Mm -hmm. You know, he had his little crew. Because I told him I always do, we, we call it an army after action review. Okay. So immediately after the incident, or we get back from the field, we'll get in the huddle, and we'll discuss what we did right, what we did wrong, what could we change, what we need to improve on, and things like that. Okay. So that's why I told him I always do that. We call it AAR, you know, and everything. So he got the guys over, and everybody talked. Then he called me over there. And these guys were, you know, they're all his age, you know, 21 to 25. Right. You know, I had a damn list, so I don't pull my scroll out. <laughs> the thing of it is, my point is, you want somebody to be honest. Mm -hmm. Because the average person would tell him, kind of like what with the show, it's good, it's your first one, you know, that's good, I'm proud of you, this, that, and that. Same thing with doing my show, they're like, you, you're good. Mm -hmm. I know that people is going to be very objective and honest. Hey, D, you need to do this. And I can mm -hmm. tell my son, you need to do this, this, that, and that. I know this is your first one. I know the expectations I have for it being your first boot camp or this being my first time with a talk show, right? right? But I need someone to be honest with me and be objective to tell me that. I don't need you to tell me. I know that, and I know you know that, and I trust you that's going to give me that. So you need the person, a person that's going to be honest with you and is not going to coddle your ass right? because your loved one's going to coddle you, and they're going right. to support you. It's good. That's cool. It's your first one. Just keep it up. I don't need to hear that shit. Right. I need to hear the truth. You know, hey, cut this down. Maybe do that. Maybe you don't. You know, you and your producer need to. I need that. Right. Okay. Right. That's what you need to be getting people that's gonna be honest with you. That, you know, gonna be say some some cuts and cut those stuff, not to hurt you, but to help you develop and fix stuff. And uh, back back again, you got to be receptive to the criticism. Yeah. That's very very important. And uh, lastly, be honest with yourself and ask yourself: Can this person help me grow? Mm -hmm. Can this person help me grow? I mean, is this person gonna put me in a position? You know, by the information, am I going to grow from it? If you know you're going to have somebody that going you know, to keep you stagnant at the same level, uh, with just teaching you how to operate, you know, you might kind of reevaluate. Now, you might, they may not necessarily be a mentor. They might be a person you ask questions for. But are they going to help me to develop uh, from point A all the way to point Z and be able to help me through that? So those are four quick things that help you in choosing a mentor. Um, going back to me personally, why I love to mentor, uh, the first thing, you know, I was recognized, uh, I remember what I didn't have. I didn't have men those mentors I didn't have um, growing up, and I didn't have that constant support and information going around. You know, going 
me and most of my buddies, we were the first of everything. Okay. First to go to college, maybe first to go to Army, first, you know, do uh, start your business and all that kind of shit, first to get married, uh, in our families, immediate families, right, that's what I right. mean by that. Um, so you didn't have this lineage or Master Yoda or Master Splinter you can go to and <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can go to them and just buy down and get all this insight. You know all what right, I'm saying? Right, I get nah, it. we really we really gonna get us some damn fortune cookies. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Uh uh I forgot uh what was Eddie Murphy little animated series it had? PJs. PJs yeah. had a little the neighborhood junkie. Yeah. Be getting your little insight. Little and little insight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of them down the junkie from the PJs. I you had, know, I had a few yeah. names. Sonny Man. They yeah. always there had you the, go. The, the, the ghetto wisdom, I call it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Blue on Bankhead. Yeah. Blue. Blue. I love Blue to death, but Blue gives some shit. You be like, what the hell? Get the fuck out around you for a minute, man. Man, poop man, just gone. She the bank ain't bank ain't gonna miss that money. Like, <laughs> you knew they care, but you gotta be realistic. And I didn't have that. So I, and I was very passionate about uh, when you being there for people that don't have that, especially youth. Being there, you know, being that little uh, uh reference to kids, you know, uh and, and people, uh, especially with business and growing and developing, being that for them. Uh the second thing, um, I love to plant seeds and see and see the impact from those seeds that I planted. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's it, it's great to, to help people out, give them some instructions and give them some kind of foresight and everything for them to look at, especially when you know somebody listening to your ass. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's an awesome feeling just to kind of do it because you can tell when you talk to somebody and they really Pay into what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then helping them draft out a blueprint for their future. Mm. You know, and that might be for life, family, business and everything like that so that's one of the things uh that's the second thing i uh i love as far as that planting them seeds and seeing the impact that comes from it um the next is something that's very near to near and dear to me and i think a lot of especially black men in the community once you are able to accomplish something in life not even accomplish when i say accomplish i'm talking about just being okay is i think you have a moral obligation to reach back mm. you have you know a lot of time we can sit here and say I'm too busy and I don't want to do this. And uh, they're so judgmental. These kids, they don't listen. They don't listen. Well, I don't think too many damn kids. I don't think we listen. We were that age either. I know. I didn't That old listen. man think he know every damn thing. He <laughs> say this and everything. But you have a moral obligation to reach back and help. And I'll give a shout out to all the 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 the, the brothers that coach with me. Uh, my, my sons, them, you know, AAU track coaches and all the man giving up their free time. And not necessarily teaching your kid a sport, but also giving them life lessons and making that impact. When you you, you just have to do that because, mm-hmm. like I tell kids all all the time, you know, I talk to the fifth grade class today. I'm not getting paid for doing this, right. but just being very honest. One day I'm be an old man in a wheelchair. You gonna be my male. You gonna be my center. You might be my doctor, whatever. And I want to make sure that I'm helping you develop. What I don't want you is being the one that's kicking in my window. You know, doing some credit card scheme on my ass. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Taking me, kicking me out my damn wheelchair and everything like that, and, and putting it on damn uh, World Star. Yeah, I I don't want that. So it's best for me to try to take care of it now, yeah. and everything. And, and and so I just, especially uh, black men, I can't stand a man that sit here and talk about judge kids and say stuff to them. And you know you have to build a holler at them, but you're so damn scared and sissified. You won't even say nothing to them mm-hmm. and everything. So stop judging. And if you're in a capacity to help, help them. Um, and then lastly, um, it helps me to grow. I think it helps me to be a better man, a better father, better husband, better leader in the community by doing that. Because um, when you deal with kids, and I was just, just even today, man, just talking to some of the kids, you get a feeling when you see a kid, number one, see a black man, helping them because you got different family dynamics mm-hmm. now and you actually giving them instructions seeing them make some successes in class we're going over math in one class they're working out problems and stuff it do something to you right. it helps you to grow help yep. you feel better about yourself and everything you learn a lot about what you can do and everything the resiliency because we all biz we all got shit to do <laughs> you know what i'm saying we all do mm-hmm. and we all can just do that same 
cop out and not want to contribute. But when we don't do that, you know, that's when a lot of this stuff happens. And we saying these kids, these kids, stop doing that, guys. So I do want a person to challenge you. If you're not doing that thing, just try to do something. Mm-hmm. Just try to do something, you know, and everything. And, and, and you'll feel a whole lot better about yourself uh, when you can make them kind of impacts on people. So those are the, the reason why I personally uh, try to mentor and not try with mentor and try to make a positive impact on my community. Because, you know, and even going back to what I said a little while ago, a lot of people helped me get where i'm at right now and i never forgot that now i did a whole lot of shit i'm a hard working person right but it's a lot of people helped me mm. a lot of people helped me they didn't have to yeah. and i'm very very conscious of that also uh when i think about that um from a business perspective when i look at um mentors um typically you want to make sure that you know we're well, looking at I look at kind of three factors in terms of we talk about mentors from a business perspective. Okay. Okay. And at first I look at those internal uh, mentors you might. That might be your family, friends, people close to you. Those are the kind of people that help you, you know, from a encouragement standpoint. Mm-hmm. To help that, you know, your mentor, you kind of help you in terms of, hey, you know, good job, keep fighting and stuff like that. And, you know, when you're feeling down and everything, they're not influencing you or teaching you about your career field. But they're helping you from a support standpoint so you can kind of get through some of them tougher things. Right. When you start going to an ex- external, the second one, uh, those type of mentors in business, those are the ones you're dealing with in terms of your supervisors, advisors, uh, your bosses and everything, where even uh, it may be a, even a direct mentor. You know, I hate to define the word and using the same sentence, but those are the people that are outside that are giving you an objective opinion. Uh, about things you should do because right. they don't really care how you feel right they just shooting it straight to you and everything and just like the first one you know they probably care about you but your greater development is more important to them okay the yeah. third uh type of mentor in business is your customers they are very 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 important because your customers help shape you in terms of what you need to do in business they're the ones that are going to let you know if this shit right or wrong, if <laughs> they want it or don't want it. Right. Far too many times people get in business and they're trying to put stuff on a customer that they want. I like this design of T-shirts. I like this design of shoes. Or this is the kind of furniture I want to put out. This is my vision. Well, if nobody's going to buy your vision. <laughs> <laughs> what point? What's the, yeah. What's the point? Exactly. And your customer, they're the ones going to mentor you like, we don't want that shit. Yeah, we, we you know? That shit. Exactly. You know, I don't want to wait a week for it. I think you need to get it to me in 72 hours. They're going to mentor you and teach you what you need to be doing in terms of how you need to function and operate your business. Okay. Okay, so those are the three types of uh, mentors that you have in business, the internal, the external, and your customers. Uh, we, we, we zipped right through that and stuff. One thing I, I do want to kind of, you know, we've, we've kind of rounded out that whole concept of mentors. I've been a youth coach for 18 straight years. And I see a lot of brothers out there giving out their time and their heart dealing with kids. And I also see a lot of damn fools out there that are, that are doing some things that they shouldn't be doing. Now, I respect any man that get their time up or, 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 or any person, period, that give their time up. Right. But people have to be very, very conscious about who they let make an impact on their kid. Hmm. And sometimes you think that you know you want to relate because this man is hard or this man is cussing your kid out he teaching me how to be a man no he teaching me how to be a damn ignorant ass person fool. yeah and a lot of times you know i hear a lot of guys well you know we just trying to teach them to be disciplined and do this that and that but i can't say how you can teach a kid to be disciplined when you are an undisciplined man right and be parents uh be very conscious cautious uh, uh, caution and conscious of who you let deal with your children right. because you have too many people out here that put things on on your kids and teach them the wrong damn thing and once they've got to a point they pick up some of these habits and they can't navigate through life mm. and everything and so uh, I think a lot of that has to do with a lot of parents they tired Mm-hmm. And they tired of been working all day. Now they want Coach Burden. Can you do this? Can you do that? I'll help you. Mm-hmm. But I ain't finna be daddy. I ain't finna be, yeah, I ain't finna take care of your child. Yeah. 
Yeah. I help him. I do every damn thing. I go to school. I go get in the ass. I talk to him. But I'm not a substitute. Right. I'm I'm an addition too. Right. You know, and uh, I think uh, the more parents can challenge themselves to be more involved, be more active with their kids, who their kids are talking to, and also have conversations and interaction with the people that are mentoring their kids, they see a lot of development because far too often we have parents dropping their kids off and big brothers and uh, and big sisters and organizations like that. And again, they're additions too. Mm-hmm. Big brother ain't going to fix something in a weekend and six other days out of the damn week, y'all got total damn chaos. And you're resetting them. Exactly, exactly. He, he, he tried to help them out during the weekend, then on Monday, you resetting them back to right where, where they was by Wednesday, the same person they was last Friday when they dropped them off. Exactly. And, 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 that, and that in itself, the influence of home does a lot. And a lot of people say, this goes, I, I guess this is a, a mentor thing too, but a lot of people say that, you know, I'm, I, I'm this way because of my environment. And I've uh, disagreed with that for a long time because I've come up in a terrible environment, terrible childhood home, and luckily I was able to to do some things. And I had, you know, my grandparents who was an addition to, <laughs> you know, they wasn't, you know, necessarily uh, the parent because when my mom came around, they didn't try to stop her from taking me. But um, I, I don't think that you. you, you you let your environment dictate to you how you're going to be instead of you just doing being yourself and learning other ways of doing things. Um, children generally pick up uh, ways about uh, people that are around them all the time. Now, like you like uh, like you might be a cusser. So your children going to learn how to cuss quicker because mm-hmm. you cussing all the time. Absolutely. They're just they just they just sponges like that. They just pick up things like that. And me personally. I think I changed a lot of the ways that I was probably going to be um, mm. because of my children. I didn't want my children necessarily. So to me, my children probably was my mentor to help me grow up faster. And to be, I had children young, so to help me grow up and, and learn faster and to be more responsible as an adult because I didn't necessarily want them to take up any of bad habits that I may pick up and do this, you know, and be that type of person. So I think that who you have around your children and what type of people they are would generally dictate sometimes who they turn out to be as a person. Absolutely. And you have to pick and choose those people wisely because everybody don't care about your children the way you care about your children. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> You're right on, bro. And you got to check your own damn self. Yeah, exactly. Let, let me say this, too. And if I rub anybody the wrong way, I'm sorry, but you'll be okay. Um, I know everybody got different situations and family dynamics going on. And... You know, if you out of state parent and we doing stuff, you know, remotely and everything like that. But let me say this to everybody. You you can't be as impactful as a parent if you only see your kid once or twice a week. Mm-hmm. You know, again, not once or once a week or every other week or whatever. You can't. And what I mean by that is, and I understand everybody got different dynamics. I get that part. But what I'm saying to you is that if you can, if you can, make your life very uncomfortable to mm. make sure your child is getting as much of your ass they can. So even though you might be obligated to just see them on the weekend or just obligated to see them every other weekend, bust your ass to try to see their ass four or five times a week. Mm-hmm. Because in a 48-hour span, you can't correct the shit from past four days. So you're trying to have be disciplined, have fun, and talk and all that kind of stuff. You ain't gonna have enough time. Right. And again, I understand everybody got different dynamics. But make life uncomfortable for you. Um children are a product of what we've done in life, good or bad or whatever. And your child is gonna be seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven, eighteen on a one time, one time only. So you have to make the most out of it when they hit that age. Mm-hmm. So the easy thing in the world to say, well, look, I ain't get them them one time, but the mom be tripping. Break your ass. Now, again, I understand it's different. You know, if you can't do it, they out of state and whatever, I get that. And so mm-hmm. if it's like that, you know, this shit don't apply to you. Right. But if you know your ass can see them more than once a week and you know, you know, if you be tired, you really can't make it out to practice, get your ass to practice. Mm-hmm. 
that does so much more for your kid, especially as fathers and everything, because it, it, it's, it, it's extremely rough when you got to sit here and, you know, see your kid. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, buying them school clothes and everything like that and everything, you know, and you know, I got them school clothes, this, that, and that. But try your best to try to be there, even if you not can't be in the same home. But if you got to be inconvenienced and you got to be tired to do that extra stuff to see them outside of what you're normally obligated to or what's mm-hmm. been rendered by the courts, please try to do that because I really appreciate any man that has – mentor to help me with my kids to be young men but i don't think nobody can make no greater damn impact than me and that's on me and i've i've had moments in my children's lives where i've tried to focus more let me grow this business make this money for this that and that and my kids have suffered accordingly right. and until the point came where look you you need to be there and i had to make some sacrifices professionally which ain't no problem but when you in the midst of trying to make some money and you be like, hey, I got to do this and that. But your children come first. Mm-hmm. And I, so I want to challenge, you know, as many people as possible, you know, whatever it is. And that's mom or dad. Uh, those jobs for real is going to be there. And if you can, if you can, if you can, really make it, make it, make yourself inconvenience to get that little extra. Mm-hmm. And I think you'll be pleased with the product you get as opposed to looking back and saying, man, I wish I had them. Again, like I say, if you can't do it, it don't apply to you. But a hit dog a holler. That's right. You know, that's in and, and, and that's just being real. That's just being real. We all know what we can and can't do. That's right. But if your ass know you can, be tired. Be tired. Leave work from there and just be tired getting your ass back home. And if you got to get two or three hours of sleep, get two or three hours of sleep just so you can make it a practice, you can make it to that recital, make it to that school program. I might give a shit about that. Right. You'll do so much more for your kid in the grand scheme of things uh, than anything, okay? Um, real quick, my tip for the week. I have a, uh, and I and I, I want to get this to everybody because I think this will be super, super impactful on everybody. I got uh, five time management uh, tips. <laughs> I'm, I'm former military, so everybody know me on super structure. I ain't saying sometimes I might be on CP time, but, you know, it'd be more so might be just, you know, because I'm trying to do eight or nine things at one time. If you know me, you know how I am. But I want to give everybody five time management te- uh, techniques to serve you. And that kind of soft in terms of anybody can do it. So if you're totally unstructured, these are the best things for you to start practicing on before you start getting really, really in depth with trying to do things for yourself. Okay. All right. Okay, here it goes. The first thing I want you to do is, is uh, set your goals the right way. When we talk about when I say set your goals the right way, make sure you're setting your goals and plans in a manner that you can actually do. If you know you if you know you're gonna uh, have eight hours of the day or ten hours of the day to take care of stuff, don't plan some shit gonna take you two or three damn days. <laughs> plan that stuff in a in a in a point if you're gonna break it up or you got a certain amount of time you have two or three, a day set up where you do that. So plan it the right way. You know, plan. Look at your 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 week. You know, break down those things you can know you can do in an hour, 30 minutes. That's going to take you a couple hours and stuff like that. And plan it out accordingly. So that's the first thing, plan everything out the right way. The next thing is form a good time management system. And what a good time management system is setting your task up in an order that you can implement all your goals. So, again, it goes back to if you know a goal that you got or a task you have to take care of, it's going to take uh, a week or a couple of days or whatever, break it down. You know, and, and break it down. And then the second thing is break it down by the time it's going to take you to do it and also the priority that has to do it. So, you know, the things you have to get done, they come first. The things you want to get done, uh, they come second. And the things that, shit, you, you know, they can wait, mm-hmm. make that last. Okay, you fit them in where you can accordingly. So kind of construct your week accordingly with that. So, again, that second thing is form a good time management system. The third thing is, and it's very, very, very crucial, because I know everybody's suffering with this, remove them damn distractions. Mm. Get off your Facebook, get off your YouTube, get off your Pornhub, get off all that kind of <laughs> stuff that you know you're going to take all damn day <laughs> looking at. Get off of it, okay? Let's remove the distractions, okay? All right, we're just saying, okay, look, for this right here, my phone is in my desk, I ain't going to deal with it and everything. 
I'm not going to be, you know, going on my messenger and all that. And I'm not going to text my, you know, folks or whatever. I'm just going to do this work. So we move all our distractions. That's very, very, very important. So we've already constructed our plan, got everything set up, and we remove the distractions. The fourth thing is uh, create time for distractions. Okay, because some of them distractions ain't necessarily negative because you might have to have a time to answer emails. Might have to have a time for uh, re- responding back to texts and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I don't know about the Pornhub stuff, but you know those things that you not to get done, but they're actually uh, time eaters because once you text somebody, you got to respond back. You call them back, they got to respond back. Now you done had a conversation with somebody and you ate up an hour or two trying to get that squared away. Mm-hmm. So kind of create some kind of time that's allocated for those distractions, okay? And... Excuse me, the fifth thing is very important, plan ahead. So this goes into what I try to do is, like I, I, and I want to do this with, with the uh, the goal setting. The last week of each month, which be next week, matter of fact, I try to draft out all the things I want to do for the month of April, okay? And I list and I put a star by the priority, what got to get done. And then what I do is I try to get the month a map for the month of April and write those tasks on certain days. The most important things, and then also look at the time factor. Can I get that done in a day or two? And I might stretch it out. So you're doing what? You're planning ahead. And then after each week, you look at the things you didn't accomplish, you know, resegregate everything by priority and time, and then just kind of go at what you already maybe had planned and see how you can adjust it from there. Remember, plans are just what? Plans. Plans can change, okay? Mm-hmm. So make sure that I think if you – Practice those five time management tips, and everyone remember we're gonna put these stuff on the uh, the YouTube channel. And uh, I haven't thought or uh, mentioned it, but this is Deontay Burton, host of Change Your Lives. <laughs> Make sure you go to the YouTube channel, like, share, and subscribe to it. I've had a, we had a real good show today. We're talking, put this information out, but there was uh, time management tips that'll be posted on there, um, on the um, uh, the webs, the, the the YouTube channel. Guys, if you know anyone that's you know, you like the information we're putting out and like the show so far, please share the information. Tell them about, hey, that little short bald head guy be put out some good stuff. <laughs> share these videos. If it kind of touched you or helped you in a certain way, make sure you let everybody know. Please subscribe to the channel. When you go to the channel, you look in the videos, like, leave a comment. What happens a lot of times is that when you like and you leave comments on, on certain videos, Facebook or uh, I mean, YouTube operates on a system of activity. Mm-hmm. So not necessarily people just viewing your videos. They also look at people liking it and people subscribing and leaving comments. So what happens is just like when you cut on your YouTube channel, you see all these suggested videos, yours truly can pop up. Mm-hmm. Okay? So I kind of need y'all to help me with the activity and stuff. The show, the show and the channel is growing, but we can always do better, and we'll do more and more with all the support you guys give us in uh as always, make sure you leave us feedback and comments with anything. Um, with the conclusion of this show, I want to kind of uh, really talk to everybody in terms of, uh, you know, back to what we're talking about in mentoring. And uh, people are so quick to judge others when they haven't done a damn thing. Um, again, if you know you're in the capacity to help people, mm-hmm. do that. Take it upon yourself. I think the easiest thing for people to do is criticize and talk about folks and they know they was in a position to help right. or do something they didn't do it. And I think that says a lot about you as a person. And I really want to challenge my ma- my males out here that if you can, do it. Now, I'm not saying you got to join Big Brother. I ain't saying you got to join any mental organization uh, out there. And I want to give a big shout out to two important organizations I'm a part of, that being Black Men United and 100 Black Men of South Metro Chapter. If you can and you got time to do that, great. If you can't join a, you know, a different organization, I understand. We all got schedules. But do something. Right. It can be a weekly ball, a blog. It can be uh, uh, a global text you can put out, an uh, 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 update or a post on Facebook or Instagram that you nev- that, that is in your heart and in your mind, and you never know how it's going to impact somebody. Like, damn, man, I really need to hear that shit today. So anything you can do, do it. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that helped the world go around a whole lot safer, and you'd be happy with yourself that you did that. Okay, so I just want to leave that with everybody. Don't be so quick to judge; be more quick to help. And I think you know you'll feel a whole lot better yourself. You have a whole different outlook on uh, our world, our community, especially our race and everything. Because of, um, in the black community, we have a lot of good brothers and good sisters out here doing a lot of good work, helping people. 
But we got far too damn many Uncle Ruckuses. <laughs> 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 we got far too many of those, and uh, what's my man from Django, Steven? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. One of the Samuel yeah, yeah, Steven. I think his name was Steven. I'm yeah, not, I can't yeah, that's that. it, Steven. Them damn Stevens. <laughs> Just you know, I always got some kind of criticism. Right. I always got some shit to say about it, but never man enough to come up with some kind of solution. And be and when you get a solution, that everybody don't want to hear that anything like that. But you know, if it was right and you felt good about it in your heart, just give it. Just give it and everything. So if, it, if it's not where I receive, it just won't where I receive. But you know what was in your heart, so give it. So if you just say, hey, I don't want to listen, but they didn't damn listen. But you knew what the right thing was, what? Give it. Yeah. Okay? And I just want you to touch on one more thing before we go. I'm with you, brother. When you guys are mentoring these children and, and just mentoring in general, mm-hmm. and if that person still turns out to do bad things and – and just be, be uh, just be a bad person. You know, you've given your one hundred and ten percent of your effort to mentor them round down the right path. Don't take it as that is your fault that that person turned out the way that they are, and then say I'm not mentoring anybody else because sometimes people once they get to a certain age, they have to go their own path. You can't guide them anymore. They have to learn on their own eventually. But well, people got a brain, exactly, and it's going for you. Mentor hit your own damn children. <laughs> You know, far too many times people are like, well, parents ain't doing this when they kids. No, they got good parents. You know, motherfucker's just hard headed. <laughs> it's just hard headed. His mom and daddy taught him. You got three other siblings that are great kids. Ain't nobody a problem. His ass just hard headed. <laughs> so, you know, that's a great point. Uh, you, 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 uh, it, it bothers you when you know you try to help somebody mm-hmm. and it didn't work out the way you wanted and everything like that. But in the grand scheme of things, if you talk to 10 kids and, and nine don't come out a little messed up in that one, Hey man, that's worth it. Exactly, that's worth it. Everybody gonna listen to you, if in its most simplistic form, we all hear the basic keys for success. Well, far too many. I mean, but but in, in actuality, it's only a few that's gonna be really successful. Mm. You know, and when I, I don't successful I word, but we're talking about just you know be able to go leaps and bounds. Mm-hmm. Like I said, on the surface, everybody pretty much got the same blueprint. Work hard, do this, get that, get that and everything like that. But the road to getting there is rough. Mm. So it's the people that kind of navigate through that that can, you know, sustain that kind of stuff. So you never, that was, that was a great point you just had, Lab. Like, it never get dejected because of your efforts then go out a certain way. I've coached 18 years, had some kids. Man, when I have a son boot camp, or one good part about it, a couple of kids I've coached, they in their 20s now, coaching their little boys, they mm-hmm. – Helping him out with boot camp. One of, his, uh, one of the kids, a coach, he DJing. Oh, okay. He's a senior at Clayton State and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Hey, coach, they bell hugging me, picking me up in the air. And I remember these same kids I was dealing with. And I got one or two of some plum damn fools. <laughs> and they grew up to be plum <laughs> damn fools. <laughs> and can't say, try, you know, right. I done been to the schools. Done talk to them. Can't sit here and say that. And, I, and, and, and I'm not the type of person that, that, that I don't give up on nobody. Don't give up on nobody because people didn't give up on me, and I definitely didn't give up on my damn self. But it's just not going to work out there sometimes. So that was a great point you just said, brother. Don't get dejected because things don't go your way. That's life. Mm-hmm. You know, we still deal with people with brains and everything. So um, this is, again, this is Deontay Burton, host of Changing Lives. Hope you enjoyed our show today. We were talking about mentoring, why I love mentoring. Hope you got uh, a lot from the show today. Remember, go to the YouTube channel, like, share, and subscribe to the uh, to the YouTube channel. Um, make sure you tell anybody about it. Uh, I love you guys. I appreciate all the support. Uh, leave comments or anything like that. We'll take suggestions. Be look out for those courses coming out uh, late April, early May, okay? Again, take care of yourself, and we'll see you guys next week. Uh-huh.